Jones. Well, good morning. Welcome to church on this beautiful Sunday. Well, why don't we just start by opening our service in prayer. Sister Kim, if you wouldn't mind opening for us. Lord, this is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. God, there is truly none like you and this is why we gather here today because you are amazing. Lord, you have done so much for us. We should be so grateful, God, for all the mighty things that you have done. Lord, and so we come to you today and we just surrender ourselves. Lord, we pray that your perfect way would be had in this place this day. God, we surrender to you and we just invite you in, oh God, that you would move in this place, in each of our lives. Have your perfect way, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well, this morning, we gather not just as a community of believers, but as those who have been set free by the power of the Holy Spirit. As the Apostle Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 3.17, now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And this truth is at the very heart of our faith. The Lord invites us to live in this freedom, to break free from fear and insecurity, and to embrace His love and grace. So let us worship today, knowing that the Spirit of the Lord is here, calling us to come out of the darkness and into His light, amen. Let's worship together, let's praise Him, amen. Yeah. 
shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Chains will fall, prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. And chains will fall, prison shake at the sound.
trodden down and weary maybe you feel like the devil's got the bed over you but let me tell you your praise is your weapon amen when you begin to lift up your voice and praise him anyhow when you begin to shout unto God with a voice of triumph let me tell you you don't praise him when you get the victory you praise him to get the victory you believe that today come on let's lift our voices and praise him come on lift it up right now hallelujah Oh, yes, we love you, Jesus. Come on, everybody, balcony, let's worship the Lord today. Even when it doesn't look like, even when it doesn't feel like, my praise, I'm going to praise him. Come on, church. Even when it doesn't look like, even when it doesn't seem yes. to win, my praise will be my weapon. My praise will be my way. My praise will be my way. 
was lost, I was blind, I was running out of time, and sin separated, the bridge was far too wide, but from the far side of the chasm, you held me in your side, so you great divine left behind heaven's home to build it here inside and there at the cross you paid the debt I owe broke my chains freed my soul for the first time I had hope thank you Jesus for the
Let's sing it one more time. Too. Lift up your heart. Still in your presence, all night stands down. Don't speak to me now. You have all my attention. I will linger and listen. I can't miss a thing. And Lord, I know my heart wants more of you. My heart wants something new. Yeah. 
open up our hearts right now by lifting our hands and surrendering. Hallelujah. We lift our hands in surrender to you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, have your will and your way in our lives today. You deserve all of the praise and all the glory, oh God. Thank you for saving us, oh God. Thank you for giving us hope in this hopeless world. Oh yes. Jesus. We open up our hearts. I open up my heart to you. Come on, church. I open up my heart to you now. So do what only you Lord, do a work in our lives. Oh, yes. Jesus, have your way. I open it.
house today we're going to come before the Lord in prayer right now but if you're here with a need in your own life whether physical emotional financial relationship whatever your need is I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if you stand here on behalf of somebody else that has a need today I'm going to come before the Lord he hears every prayer that we pray we're going to pray especially for all the victims and the families of those from the the, um, the killing in Bondi yesterday we need to pray that God we strengthen those families at this difficult time. Lord God, we come before you right now. Lord, you are the God of all comfort. And Lord Jesus, we just pray, oh God, that you would be with every family affected by this killing yesterday in Bondi. Oh God, Lord Jesus, Lord, our, our world is groaning, oh God, for you to come again. Oh God, Lord, so much hopelessness in this world, oh God. But Lord Jesus, we pray that you would visit with each family, oh God. Be with everybody that was exposed to these atrocities. Oh God, Lord God, we pray that you would just comfort them in their time of need. Lord, be with all the first responders, the nurses, the doctors, the police, the emergencies, staff, oh God. Just be with them, Lord. Lord Jesus, and we pray for every need in this place represented by a raised hand. Lord, those of us who are in this house today with needs, oh God, I pray that you would heal, that you would deliver. Lord God, that you would make a way where there is no way. Lord God, that you would do miracles, Lord God. Lord, you would do that, that, those things that only you can do, oh God. Lord, we put our needs, we put our burdens in your hands. For you told us to cast all of our cares on you, for you care for us. And some of us here stand on behalf of others. Lord, as intercessors, oh God. And Lord God, we pray for those that aren't here today, oh God, but we have stretched our faith knowing and believing, oh God, you can do a work in their life also. Lord God, our faith is in you and our trust is in you, Lord God. We thank you that you hear us when we pray. We thank you, Lord God, that your arm is not short, that you cannot move and do miracles. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for the comfort of being able to cast all our cares on you today. Lord God, I pray that we would not leave this place today carrying burdens that we ought not to be carrying. Lord Jesus, Lord, as your word goes forth today, that you would speak to every heart. Lord God, I come against the distractions of busy weeks ahead and busy weeks gone. Lord God, the troubles and the, the weight of the world that we often carry on our shoulders. Lord God, let it be no hindrance, O oh God, to the ministry of your word, to the moving of your spirit in this house today. Come on, church, let's just worship God just for a moment right now. Hallelujah. Let's just send an incense up to him. Let our praise be as incense unto you, Lord Jesus. Oh, yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. All I want is to live within your love. Be undone by who you are. My desire is to know you. Lord, I open. Lord, I open up again. Hallelujah. So my fears. Let's clap our hands to the Lord today. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Amen. Lovely to see everybody here in church today. We want to welcome everyone that's here. And if you're a guest here and you're here for the first time, we welcome you in the precious name of Jesus. If you're a guest joining us online, we welcome you also. Let's put our hands together for all of our guests. We welcome you today. And like I always say, you only get to be a guest once because... Then after that, we just want you to make yourself at home because this is not just a church, but a family. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, you may be seated. Got a few announcements today. Bishop and Sister Downs are ministering in Sydney today. So keep them in your prayers. But coming up this Thursday night, all the ladies say this Thursday night, this Thursday night, our ladies are going to be having their gather service, which is where all the ladies gather together. That's what it sounds like. 
All the ladies gather together. They're going to having a, a church service at 7 o'clock on Thursday night. All ladies are welcome and all ladies are encouraged to be here. Of a time of testimony, a time of worship, a time of fellowship. And also if you can bring a plate because straight after the service, they're going to have a supper to share with the tea and coffee. So that's Thursday night at 7 o'clock. Of course, coming up uh, in, at the end of July, we've got our National Women's Ministry Conference. It's going to be held in Mapleton, Queensland. That's on the Sunshine Coast there from July 26 to July 28, ladies. So that's in Queensland. It's a great opportunity to get away while it's cold in Canberra. Go and gather with ladies from all around Australia for a wonderful ministry uh, and a conference there. So you can register online. The details are available. You'll see some little pink posters outside. You'll be able to scan that QR code, get all the information for that. And I encourage you, if you're going to go all the way to Queensland, don't go there just for the weekend. Try to go a couple of days before and have a bit of a break and a holiday. Maybe catch up with some other ladies from church and, and do the same. And I'm also excited. I want you to mark this date in your calendar. Wednesday, the 15th of May. It's a Wednesday night. Everyone say a Wednesday night. We're having one night or a midweek revival with Brother Stanley Harvey. Our general superintendent's gonna be here. So I encourage everybody to be here on that Wednesday night. Wednesday, the 15th of May. Come expecting God to do great things. I'm believing for miracles, signs and wonders. I'm believing people to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. So the 15th of May, one night revival. We're looking forward to that. Praise God. Well, let's stand. We're going to take up our Sunday morning tithes and offerings. And at this time, our children, as soon as they've given their Sunday school offering, which is going to be at the front here, then they can go to their Sunday school classes. So let's all stand. Amen. Praise the Lord. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your goodness to us. We thank you, Lord, that we have the opportunity to give. Truly, Lord God, we are a blessed people and we thank you for your blessing in our lives, for all the things that you have provided for us, material, spiritually, emotionally, all of these things. Oh God, we recognize that you take good care of us and we thank you for your blessings. Lord, as we give our tithes and offerings today, we pray that you'd bless them, multiply them for the, for the expansion of your kingdom in this world. We pray in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. Amen. Let's give to the Lord today as we sing this song, Blessed Be Your Name. Oh, yes, Lord. Sunday school children, you can bring your offering at the front here. For everyone else, the ushers will be collecting the offering with the basket going around. If you want to give online, you can do a tap in the foyer. We've got those facilities there as well. Blessed be your name, the land that is plentiful. Streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. When found in the desert place, go walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing. sun is shining down on me when the world's all as it should be blessed be your name everybody sing blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering though there's pain in the offering blessed be your name everybody sing every blessing you pour out Be a boy. 
your Bibles out and go to Daniel chapter 7 and verse 25. Amen. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 25. And then if you can go to the back of your Bible, 1 John chapter 4 and verse 3. Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, and 1 John chapter 4 and verse 3. Praise the Lord. Have we had some beautiful weather around Canberra the last couple of days? Amen. How many people love autumn in Canberra? Anybody else with me? There's a few people. It's the most beautiful time of the year. Amen. As the trees turn those beautiful colors. In fact, that tree in the front of our front lawn is just going to get better and better. The way it's going to go red. It's a beautiful picture. So get a picture in front of it today or next weekend. Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. Daniel is a book of prophecy. And this is a prophecy that we read here. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. And shall wear out. Everybody say wear out. And he shall wear out the saints of the Most High. And think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hands until a time and times and the dividing of time. I want to read the first portion of that again. It says, and he shall speak out great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 3. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, or the spirit of Antichrist. Everyone say spirit of Antichrist. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof you have heard that it should come. You've heard that it's going to come. But even now is already, even now already is it in the world. You've heard that the Antichrist will come. But the spirit of the Antichrist is already at work in the world. I want to minister on this title today, Wearing Out the Saints. Wearing Out the Saints or Resisting the Spirit of the Antichrist. Amen. Let's lift our hands and get ready to receive what God's going to speak to us today. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord God, that your word is forever settled in heaven. The grass may wither and the flower may fade, but your word is forever settled. And Lord God, as we stand here today, we, we are in need to hear from you. Lord God, we want to hear from you today. Lord, I pray. Lord, hide me behind the cross. Turn me into a microphone from heaven. Lord, help us not to be distracted, oh God. That, Lord, it would not be the words that I speak, oh God, that you would speak to every heart in this place today. Lord God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this day. We are ready to receive from you. Let our hearts be soft and our ears open. We pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. Amen. You may be seated. Wearing out the saints. You see, I I believe, and I ministered a little bit about this on Wednesday night. If you didn't catch it, you can see it in the archives on our YouTube there. But we ought to be seriously concerned about the direction that the world is heading in. I don't say concerned, I say seriously concerned. Because if you just turn on the news and start reading a little bit more broadly than just your normal readings, you will find very quickly and come to probably the same conclusion that I have come to, that the world has gone crazy. I have to ask myself, where on earth has common sense gone? It seems like we've flushed common sense out of our society. And I don't know, I really don't know, church, how long we can keep going down the pathway where we are headed. I don't see any stop signs on this road. I don't see any stop signs. I don't know how long the world can keep going down this pathway. And I believe if we continue down this pathway, we will become as perverted a society as you could ever imagine. There has to be something behind this. There has to be something behind it. There has to be, I believe, as a a Christian, 
and a spirit-filled Christian that there is a spirit behind what we are seeing happening in the world today. And if you agree with me, you can say amen. If not, you can leave me to speak by myself. But there has to be something behind it. Things are ramping up very quickly. Things are changing very quickly. Everybody's wanting to change things that have been forever settled. We come to Daniel in our text today. And Daniel, Daniel chapter 7 is about Daniel's dream of these four beasts. And you like to study it another time. It would be good for you. But many Christian theologians associate this prophecy in Daniel with the Antichrist. He speaks against the Most High. He seeks to wear out the saints. And although the term Antichrist is not mentioned in the Old Testament, we are reading a prophecy in Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, about the spirit of the Antichrist. The dream of these four beasts is obviously a prophetic vision that provides a symbolic overview of the rise and fall of empires, great empires. And each of the beasts, each of those four beasts in the dream represent a kingdom or an empire that will have dominion over the earth at different times. Now the vision is, is a vision that is for Daniel at that time concerning the empires that are gonna rise and fall during Daniel's time. But the nature of prophecy is that it's not just for now, but it's for the future as well. Because this vision is also part of a broader prophecy concerning the last days before Jesus comes back. The little horn, if you read it again, the little horn that emerges from the fourth beast is described as speaking boastfully and making war against the saints of God. This, this fourth horn is speaking about someone or something that will speak against the Most High God, that will war against the saints of God. It is speaking of the Antichrist. And John told us, John said, he said, you know what? You're, you, when you read Revelation and you look toward the end time, you look toward, you know that the Antichrist is coming. But John said, make no mistake, the Antichrist is coming and the Antichrist will be a person, but the spirit of the Antichrist is already at work. And I believe that is the spirit behind much of the craziness and much of the anti-Christian sentiment that we are seeing in the world today. Somebody say amen. Wearing out the saints. I'm not talking about getting old. I'm not talking about having a hard day's work and being worn out, but I'm talking about being spiritually worn out. What happens when you get worn out? Well, that happens a little bit more often now than it used to with me. But getting worn out, you start to feel tired. When you start feeling tired, you can easily begin to doze off. Right after this service, I'm going to drive to Cootamundra. i got to make sure I'm not tired because I don't want to doze off. But sometimes you can become worn out by things, not just a physical tiredness, but you, come, you become worn out and you give up. You can even compromise when you become worn out. Now, I'm not going to ask anybody to show hands because I'm sure there's no parents like my, my wife and I, but sometimes our kids can wear us out. Anybody ever had your kids wear you out? You get to the point, you just say, whatever. I know Brother Snyder and Sister Jerusalem, that's not you, you know. You've got a new baby, you're going to be perfect. She's perfect. She's not going to wear you out. But you know when they just, they just nag you, they don't stop. I had one trying to wear me out yesterday to buy him something from the football canteen. I had already, my wife had already made him lunch. But the food in the canteen looked bigger. And it just gnawing at me to the point where I had to remember what I was preaching tomorrow. I'm not going to get worn out. I'm not going to compromise. Because you know what happens when we get worn out? We're like, well, whatever. Do whatever you want. I don't care. Just for the sake of, of it, I'm just going to compromise. And that's what can happen when we get spiritually worn out as well. And make no mistake, we have an enemy of our soul, the spirit of the Antichrist, working to wear you out as a Christian. Not, you know why he want to wear you out? So you get sleepy. 
so that you give up, so that you compromise, so that you get worn out, so you just zone out. I'm just zoned out. I just don't care what's going on around. You know, these kids have messed the house up so much, I'm just zoned out. It's like I can't even see it anymore. Some of you know what I'm talking about. But this tells us, Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, that the Antichrist is at work seeking to speak against the Most High God and to wear out the saints so that he can change some things. Everyone say, change some things. He's going to try and change God's word. He's going to try and get a holy church to become an old unholy church. He's going to try and get the church to compromise. It says, and he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High God and think to change times and laws. Why does he seek to wear us out? Let me tell you, the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church of God. But the spirit of the Antichrist knows that he cannot change anything as long as the church is awake. Everybody say awake. The spirit of the Antichrist knows he cannot change anything if the church is alert. But he is seek to wear us out, to push us down, to, so we become tired, so we compromise, we zone out, and he says, you know what, now I've got the church on their knees, and I can begin to change some things. Matthew chapter 13, verse 25 says, and while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and then went away. How did the tares get there? Because they slept. And when we sleep, we allow the enemy access. And so families, parents, husbands and wives, we need to wake up and serve an eviction notice and go out into our field and say, hey, has the enemy got in our field? Is the enemy getting into our household through media, through TV, through social media? How's the enemy getting in? Because the enemy's got one thing and one purpose is to wear you out and to come in and plant tares amongst the wheat. We can't allow ourselves to fall asleep. And so let me say this. If the Antichrist was at work in the world 2,000 years ago, how much more is the spirit of the Antichrist at work in the world today? Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 20 to 23. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. I want to stop there. Even some of these... These things are creeping into the way we speak. You hear young people, if something's good, they say it's wicked. Anyone ever heard that? It's really wicked. And my grandmother's thinking, well, then why are you doing it? But what they mean is it's good. A lot of bad things are getting called good. Even our language has changed to accommodate it. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil and put darkness for light and light for darkness. And put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Everybody say woe. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Everybody say woe. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink. Everybody say woe. Which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. The devil wants to make an unholy, a holy church become unholy. And he's going to do it however he can. Whether we become prudent in our own eyes and we get led away into a, a life of unrighteousness. Whether it be by redefining things. How many people know that the world wants to redefine a lot of things? That's why I stood so strong against the redefinition of marriage. Marriage is in the Bible between a man and a woman. That's why I don't want it to include anything else because it's in the Word of God. It belonged to us first. That's controversial these days, apparently. Wasn't when I was a kid. Whether we're getting to redefine things, calling good evil and evil good, whether it be to, to get the church to start drinking wine and strong drink and then compromise, it says, whoa, whoa, to take away the righteousness from the righteous. That's the work of the devil, to take away the righteousness from the righteous. Everybody say, whoa. I want you to notice, it doesn't say, wow. It says, whoa. 
And as I begin to read that, begin, God begin to speak to me because there are a lot of Christians being wowed by things they should be wowed by. Write that down if you're taking notes. A lot of Christians, once upon a time, used to say, whoa, but now the devil's worn you out. You're compromising, and now you're saying, wow. Things that you, 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 couldn't, you couldn't put up with, but now you tolerate. We are being wowed by things that we should be wowed by. You see, we are wowing the things that God is wowing. We have become, even as Christians, because of the wearing down of the saints, that we've become impressed by stuff that Christians should never be impressed by. Laughing at things that Christians should never be laughing at. Entertained by things that Christians should never be entertained by. Watching stuff that, that we should never be watching. Why? Because we've allowed ourselves to get worn down, to compromise, and to begin to redefine some things. Even now, a couple sleeping together before they're married, we, we call it sleeping together. I'm pretty sure there's a bit more than sleeping going on. But the Bible calls it fornication. We've redefined a whole lot of things to try and tame it down so we feel a little bit better about it because we've become worn out and the church has become zoned out. And, you know, we get to a point where we're like, you know what, I'm just going to give in. Let me tell you, there is a spirit behind it, and it's the spirit of the Antichrist. And church, I want to tell you today, God didn't call me to be a preacher. He called me to be a pastor. And a preacher get up and preach nice messages, but a pastor will come up and say, come on, sheep, don't get off track. Get back on the right track. Come on, I want you to, let me tell you, church, it's not time to be zoned out. It's not time to let the devil wear you out. Get back on track and keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. I want to tell you, he's coming back for his church. And I'm believing that we're going to be a victorious church. We ain't going to be a church just limping across the line. No, we're a victorious church. Don't allow yourself to be worn out by the Antichrist. There's no doubt in my mind that we're living in the last days. We have an adversary who is at work in the world. We must be faithful. Everyone say faithful. We must resist the spirit of the Antichrist. Here is the reality for us today. There are two movements in the world. <laughs> it's not left wing and right wing. No. There are two movements in the world, the spirit of the Antichrist and the spirit of God. And we say, well, you know what? We're a free country. No one's invaded us. No, we have been invaded. We've been invaded by all sorts of crazy new fashion ideas, philosophies. They, that has transformed our country. And many people, even in Australia, we feel like our hands are tied. We just need to go along with it. Many Christians are just feeling worn out. We've just worn out and zoned out. We just keep our faith to ourselves and all those things. And we've, become, we've gone to sleep and parents have become worn out. They've allowed the enemy to have work in their home. Many churches, let me tell you, I'm sorry to say, many churches have become worn out and starting to compromise even the most unbiblical stuff. They're bringing it from the world and bring it into the church. There is a spirit behind us behind it and John said it is the spirit of the antichrist and is now already in the world antichrist means an opponent of the messiah one who stands in opposition against everything that Jesus Christ represents while the antichrist will, will be a literal person the antichrist spirit influences religions governments education Literature, entertainment. Let me ask anybody today, can you see it? What about all the confusion in the world? God is not the author of confusion. All the confusion in the world today is the work of the Antichrist. And so we got to learn to recognize these characteristics of the spirit of the Antichrist. Number one, a dem demonic hatred against God and his people. That is the work of the Antichrist. John wrote of the Antichrist, it was granted to him to make war with the saints. Who would have thought that an innocent bunch of Christians worshiping could become such a, a thorn in someone's side? 
to the point where they hate Christians. Because Satan hates God and can't touch him. You know what he's going to do? He's going to come against the saints. But I want to remind you today that the devil cannot touch you without your permission. He is already defeated. In fact, you don't even have to fight the devil. Anybody ever tell you you need to fight the devil? Tell them they're wrong. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee from you. Yeah, and before that, submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. A lot of Christians, they're fighting. They're, they're, they're shadow boxing. There's nothing to fight. Because you don't need to fight the devil. We resist the devil and he will flee. Another characteristics of the Antichrist is an effort to remove and replace God. In 2 Thessalonians, it says of the Antichrist, the son of perdition who, ex who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God and that is worshipped. It's a spirit behind removing any reference to Christian things, trying to remove it all from our society trying to remove prayer out of parliament, trying to remove scripture out of schools. It's the work of the Antichrist. Lawlessness and anarchy. Paul called the Antichrist the lawless one. The spirit of division, that spirit drives anarchy. It's, the, it's erupting worldwide in crime and rioting and looting and violence and rebellions against authority. It is a characteristic of the spirit of the Antichrist. Number four, Mass deception. Everyone say deception. And don't be deceived. Christians also fall into this category. Many Christians who have not founded on the Word of God and don't have their roots in the Word of God, if you don't know what the truth is, you'll also be deceived. So how can we stop ourselves from being deceived? Let me tell you, you've got to know the truth. In the banks, somebody once told me that, of course, as a bank teller, one of the things that you have to watch out is for fraudulent notes. So how do they train the bank tellers to identify fraudulent notes? Do they show them every single uh, variation of a fraudulent note? No, they don't. They show them the true notes. They get them to study the true. They know the truth so well that if you put something false in their hand, they're going to identify it straight away. That's why the Bible says, buy the truth and sell it not. Blasphemy against God. Blasphemy against sacred things. We see it at work in the world. In, in Revelation 13, it says, And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemy. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name. The spirit behind it is the spirit of the Antichrist. But let me tell you, God has always had a remnant. Everyone say a remnant. God has always had a remnant. And when I say remnant, you say, well, pastor, that doesn't sound exactly like what I, I want to be part of. I don't want to be part of that remnant because in the world today, the word remnant sounds like it's something that, that's cast aside. It sounds like something that's left over and useless. But God has always had a remnant. There will be a people God has always had a people, Brother Leon, that will stand against the tide of this world. God has always had a people that will stand against the ways of the world. God has always had a people that will continue to call on the name of the Lord. Come hell or high water, I'm not giving up. I'm not gonna be worn down. I'm not gonna zone out. I'm gonna stand on the Word of God. I wanna be part of the remnant in the last days. And I pray God has a remnant here at Calvary Chapel. Let me tell you the most important thing is that we build our life on the Word of God. If we're going to be deceived, don't allow yourself to be deceived. Get a hold of the Word of God and say, I want to know the truth. I'm going to buy the truth and I'm not going to sell it not. I'm not wavering. I'm not compromising. I'm not allowing myself to get worn out by the Spirit of the Antichrist. If the musicians could get ready to come now, that would be great. I have a saying. And I, I just made it up. But let the church be the church and let the world be the world. You see a lot of people, they ask questions, say, Pastor, well, what about this in the world? What about this and what about these activities and what about that? I eventually made up my mind that we're so far apart from the world. We're even called as a church to come out from the world and be separate. Let the world do the world and let the church be the church. There's no crossover. We're different. 
We've been called out of Egypt. He led us out of Egypt. Like I preached last weekend, he's called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. There cannot be any fellowship with darkness and light. Let the world be the world and let the church be the church. Do you love God today? Are you going to be faithful to the end, church? Are you going to be faithful in everything to God? Don't allow yourself to be worn down by the spirit of the Antichrist. Esther chapter 5, as I get ready to finish. Then went Haman forth that day joyful and with a glad heart. Haman, there's probably no better picture of the devil in the Bible than Haman. Everybody would bow and everyone would, would move and salute Haman. But it says here that he was having a good day, he had a glad heart. But when Haman saw Mordecai, everyone say Mordecai. When he saw Mordecai at the king's gate, he didn't stand up, he didn't move. Haman was full of indignation against Mordecai. Nevertheless, Haman refrained himself, and when he came home, he sent and called for his friends, Zeresh and his wife. And Haman said, look at all the glory of the riches that I've got. Look at all the things I've got. Look at how many children I've got. And look at all the things wherein the king has promoted me. I've become prominent in the kingdom. And, and, and how the king has advanced me above princes and servants. Look at all the promotions I've got. Look at all the success I've had, Haman says. Haman said, moreover, even Esther the queen did not let no man come in with the king unto the banquet that she had prepared, but she let me come in. I'm getting some royal treatment. I'm a pretty important guy. And tomorrow I'm invited unto her also to be with the king. I got a lot of good things happening. But you know what? Verse 13, look what it says. Yet all these things mean nothing. So long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting at the king's gate. He had everybody bowing to him. When he would walk past, everybody would move and show respect. He had everything going for him, promotions, money, children, lands. He had it all. But brother, often there was one person that was a thorn in his side. Everyone say one person. One person. As he had walked past the king's gate, everybody would jump out, salute, everyone would bow. But Mordecai refused to even move. I will not be intimidated. You can give me that look if you want, but I ain't moving for you. I'm not moving for anybody. And you know what? It robbed him of all of his joy. He said, all these things mean nothing because Mordecai will not bow. He will not move. He will not respect me. He will not give in. I can't wear him out. And nowhere in Scripture is there a better picture of Satan than in the character of Haman. He was arrogant. He was ambitious. He loved his ill-gotten power. He loved to crush his adversaries. He delighted in the failures of people. He delighted seeing people bow to him. He delighted in destruction. And as he moved around, everyone would stand up and bow and move for him. You know why they bowed? They bowed out of fear. They were slaves of the system. They had become worn out, bowing. And he said, I've got so much power. I got all these things going for me. But there's one thing between me and the fulfillment of my dreams. What is it, Haman? What is it? What's irritating you? What's this one thing? You seem to have it all. What's this one thing? You are, you're awesome. You've got power. What is standing in your way? What is bothering you? He said, I'll tell you what's bothering me. There's a guy named Mordecai who will not bow. I can't wear him down. I can't get him to compromise. He's faithful. There's one Jew who does not bow. Everyone else bows, but he won't even move. And he said, I can't even get any joy. All I can see is this one guy, Mordecai, who will not give in, and it bothers me. As he walked by in the city, in the town, everyone would say, it's time to bow. Mr. Haman's coming. Everybody bow. And you know what? It's like our world today. New ideals and all these new philosophies and all that. And all the world, if we, they parade them in front of us and we all feel like we have to put up the sign, put up the flag, 
wear, wear a certain color. We all got to bow to it. Otherwise, you're going to be you're going to be seen on the outer. They're going to call your names. But let me tell you, Mordecai says, "Excuse me, but I can't do that." I can't bow. I cannot pay homage. I cannot worship you. I only worship the one true living God. I will only bow to God. I refuse to move. I refuse to be I refuse to be worn out. And Haman, he I'm sure he had a look on his face, that look of displeasure. That look that maybe some of you have experienced when you didn't agree with what everyone else in the workplace was talking about. Like trying to intimidate you into changing the way you think. Last I checked, there's no laws over what I think. The enemy has told you that you don't matter. But I've come to tell you we do matter. The enemy has told you that your faithfulness makes no difference. But let me tell you, you rob Satan of his joy. He wants nothing more than for you to bow. But I've come to tell you, the church, stand still. Stand up. Stand. Put on the armor of God and say, I'm not going to bow to the ways of this world. I'm going to be faithful to the end. I want to be part of the remnant that God is going to have in these end times. I will not bow. I will not be worn out. I'm going to stand for righteousness. Let's stand all across this place today. I want to encourage you, don't be worn out. The spirit of the Antichrist is seeking to wear out the saints. We struggle, and I know, and maybe rightfully so, but we struggle with feelings like we're nothing. But I want to tell you that we are something. When you don't bow, you are sending a signal to the devil. You haven't got me. I'm not worn out. I'm going to be part of the remnant. Everybody say every day. Every day I'll be faithful. I'll be at the king's gate. I'm not going to bow. Every day, I'm going to keep praying. Every day, I'm going to remain consecrated. Every day, I'm going to be faithful to God. Let me tell you, it doesn't matter how long that you've been in church. Every day you remain faithful, you rob Satan of his satisfaction. It doesn't matter how long you've been in God. You're going to find me at the king's gate, Brother Rocky. I'm going to be there if I feel good. Or I feel bad, I'm going to be at the king's gate. The devil doesn't fear our talent. He doesn't fear our education. Let me what he, they tell you what he fears. He fears our faithfulness. He wants to wear you out. He wants to get you zoned out. But I'm not going to let him wear, out, wear me out. I'm going to be faithful to God. Oh, yeah, and some days it's easy to get to the gate. And other days it's really hard to get to the gate. Some days you're going to crawl to the king's gate, but I'm going to be there and Haman's going to walk past and everybody else may bow, but I refuse to bow. If I'm your pastor today, hear me out. Don't allow the spirit of the Antichrist to wear you out. You know what I'm talking about. I believe it's resonating with people today. You can feel it. You defeat the spirit of the Antichrist when you completely fall in love with Jesus Christ. The reason why we get worn out is we left our first love. Sometimes we're trying to live with one foot in the world and one foot in the church. We're trying to live this life of compromise and always trying to find where the line is. Let me tell you, you defeat the spirit of the Antichrist when you completely fall in love with Jesus. I'm going to do something different today for our altar call. Many of you I've married at this altar before. You've stood here and taken your vows. But I feel like we're going to close this service out with a, with a wedding here at this altar. And if you're ready to commit and you're ready to say, I I'm married to this. I'm going to be faithful. I got nowhere to go. Where can I go but to turn to the Lord? If you've made up your mind and said, I'm not, I've decided I'm going to live for Jesus. I'm not going to allow myself to be worn out. I'm not going to be a cruel person. I'm not going to go and, and say terrible things to people, but I'm going to stand my ground. I don't have to be a rioter. I don't have to do all those things, but I'm going to stand my ground. I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to stand on the Word of God. If you made up your mind that you're not turning back, if you made up your mind, and these are some of the vows that I give to couples, for better or worse, I'm going to live for Jesus. 
for richer or poorer, I'm gonna live for Jesus. In sickness and in health, I'm gonna live for Jesus. Forsaking all others. You know what? Some of us need to break up with some things so we can live for God the way He wants us to live for Him. So we gotta, we gotta give an eviction notice to some exes. You can't stand at the altar and say, oh, I love you, Jesus. Why there's some things that you ought not to be messing with. I want to invite you to this altar, and I believe every single one of us should make a move today and say, God, I want to be faithful. I'm not going to allow myself to be worn out. I'm going to be in the King's Gate. I will not bow to the ways of this world. I will not bow to the ideals of this world. I will worship no other. I will not turn to idols. I will not worship anything other than God. He will be first in my life. For I have decided to follow Jesus, and I'm not turning back. As we sing this song, I want you to come, stand at this altar. We're going to have a marriage ceremony. If you're single and you've never been married, here's your chance. But we're going to come and stand at this altar, lift our hands, and say, I have decided to follow Jesus. I'm not turning back for richer or poorer. I'm going to be faithful. In sickness and in health, come hell or high water, whatever it is, I will be faithful to God. Hallelujah. If you can't make it to this altar, stand in your seat and lift your hands and say, I'm standing on the promises of God. Oh, yes, we love you, Jesus. Come on, move right out here. There's people in the aisle there. Oh, yes, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to pray in a moment. I want you to pray with me. Oh, God. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. We thank you for the exodus that we have out of sin and bondage and slavery by the blood, the water, and the spirit. We thank you, Lord God, that you have delivered us. We thank you for the hope that we have in you, Jesus. And as we stand in this place today, oh God, we are part of the remnant that you have called out. Lord, we are part of the remnant, oh God, that is still standing in these last days. And I pray for everybody in this church. Give them strength, oh God. Strengthen their inner man. Strengthen their spirit, oh God, that they may withstand the wiles of the devil, that they may withstand, oh God, the wearing out of the saints. We will not be worn out, for I have decided that I'm going to live for Jesus. I have decided that I believe in his word. I have decided that I will not compromise. For better or worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health, forsaking all others, I choose to live for Jesus. Come on, let's worship Him, church. Let's worship Him today. I'm so glad to see there's families here today taking a declaration today. Let me tell you, your family's in safe hands when you stand for Jesus. Oh, yes, oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord and make this declaration. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood. And righteousness. Oh yes. I dare not trust. Oh yes. The sweetest faith. Oh yes, in Jesus' name. For holy trust in Jesus. Let's sing it again. It's our anthem. Oh yes. My hope is built on nothing less. And Jesus' blood and righteousness. Oh Lord, I dare not trust the sweetest thing. The holy trust. But holy trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone. Christ alone. Saviors of through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide His face.
my cornerstone Lord Jesus at the center of it all the cornerstone the rock of our salvation oh yes why don't you just pray right now and declare that he's the Lord of your life you are the owner you're the master Jesus you're the cornerstone we place you on the highest mountain. Jesus, you are our priority. You're our one desire. Lord, this one thing we do, forsaking the things of the world, we press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Come on, let's lift our voice in prayer right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Oh, yes, oh, God. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. Come on, church, continue to pray. Just a few more moments. We make our declaration. Make our vows again to the Lord. To follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. Decided. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No. to pray over all of us right now. Amen. We are a church family. We've got our heart and our mindset on living for Jesus. I want to be ready when Jesus comes back. Amen. Amen. And I, it's the greatest privilege to pastor this church. But let me tell you, I take pastoring seriously. And I preach some messages you're going to be encouraged and other messages you're going to feel like, you know, God hits you on the back of the head and say, wake up. Amen. Well, I'm thankful for the tough love of God as well. Sister Melanie, pray for our church today. Lord Jesus, we come before you as your children, God. Lord God, we come to you humble. Lord, we've been broken, God. 
But Jesus, we have a testimony. We each have a testimony of your goodness in our life. Lord, of your faithfulness, Jesus. Lord, you have walked us through the storm time and time again, God. And we thank you for your goodness. And this morning, as we have declared that we will follow you, God, we have made up our mind, Jesus, no matter what comes, God, we will stand faithful as your servants, Jesus, because we know there will come a day where we will meet you, God. We will be forever, Lord, on the streets of gold, worshipping you as one and we look forward to that day Jesus we keep it in our minds Lord we thank you for your goodness Lord go with us today help us every step of the way that we would proclaim your goodness Lord with boldness Jesus that you would give us the courage to stand firm for the righteousness Lord that we would declare your righteousness to our generation Jesus Lord we pray this in your precious and holy name. Amen. Everybody say in Jesus' name. Everybody say in Jesus' name. He's our cornerstone. You know, we got some tradesmen here. We got some stonemasons and some builders. But that first stone, that, put, that when they lay a brick or they lay a stone, that first stone is so important because it's the cornerstone. You're going to get all your levels from that stone. You're going to get all your, your straight walls from that stone. And let me tell you, if you have any other rock other than Jesus, you're going to be off course. Make Jesus your chief corner stone. Somebody say amen. God bless you all. Have a great Sunday. Make sure you stay for a cup of coffee, some cake. I have decided to follow Jesus. I'm not turning back. I'm married to this thing. Come hell or high water, richer or poorer, sickness and in health, forsaking all others. Oh, yes.